Okay, great. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you, both of you for joining me. And for those, for those who don't know, uh, we have a, a, a pleasure here uh, because we have at the highest level of, of leadership in uh, United Faculty of Florida, our president or incoming president and vice president here to speak to chapter members. Now, when this uh, recording actually goes out. Both of you will be installed in office because we plan on releasing this July 1st, with this, which is your first day. And uh, Caitlin, if I could start out with you, because I think some, most people in our chapter know Andrew because of the campaign, and everything he met with our chapter. So could you introduce yourself to our, to our chapter? Absolutely. So I'm Caitlin Guiley. I am biology faculty at Pasco Hernando State College. I teach marine biology and environmental science general biology. I'm also chapter president at PHSC and I'm on the membership committee and I'm the incoming vice president. Um, I've been a union organizer since 2016 when we started our campaign at PHSC to form a union and I've been president for the past three years, I think. Great. And Andrew, for, for those in our chapter who maybe didn't hear you when you um, came and met with us during the campaign, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Andrew Gothard. I'm a faculty member at Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton. Um, I've been there since 2017, and I'm an English instructor. Um, during that time, I've you know been a member, door knocking and membership campaigns, membership chair, vice president. Uh, and I, I've, most people probably recognize me around the state from my role as state membership committee chair for the last two years. And uh, now I will be stepping into the role of UFF president. And I'm really looking forward to it. And there's no one I would rather be working with as VP than Caitlin Guiley. She is, she is the best. So we're, we're, we're pumped up about it. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Count me in as unanimous. I'm, I'm happy yeah. with both of you. <laughs> Are uh, are leading uh, leading our, our union um, for the typical chapter member, president or vice president of the state body, um, UFF, is elected and you know serves serves a term, and this usually goes beyond the attention of most dues paying members of the union. So, in what way do you and your office touch the average union member? Um, and so, Andrew, if you want to start us out, and then uh, Caitlin, you can chime in. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are a couple of ways in which the, the president and the VP connect to the average member. Um, and I think this is go going to be especially true for the way Caitlin and I plan to operate. We plan to be very member focused. We plan to be very, you know, local chapter support focused. We, we see leadership as a service role and we see the model of UFF as, you know, the power of this union lies in its members and its local chapter leaders, and that is what filters up to the UFF Senate. And the officers exist to support whatever is happening at the local chapters and to empower the initiatives that are going on there. So, you know, bringing that back around to the question, one of the key ways in which the, the both of us connect to the local members are through, um, for instance, budgetary decisions, right? Caitlin and I, it's really more Caitlin's venue to handle the budget, but Caitlin and I work together to develop an annual budget where we you know, decide, well, what are some spending initiatives we want to undertake? Where do, you know, do we want to hire more staff to, so that you know, our, our local chapters can have better support on you know, bargaining and grievances and membership growth or whatever? Do we want to dedicate funding to you know, chapter organizing campaigns? Like just sort, sort of where does the money go? And then we send that to the steering committee and it gets altered or updated and it goes to the Senate for approval. Um, other ways that the local, that the, off, the state level officers connect to the local are especially throughout the year with um, issues that we need to organize around, whether those are political, social, they could be regional. So we help chapters know when another chapter is under attack or when, you know, people have been fired for union work so that we can send letters and do calling campaigns. So we connect with, you know, local members and local chapters in that way. And just in general, you know, Caitlin and I plan to be very accessible to whoever wants to talk to us. So, you know, this is not our first listening campaign meeting. So in the coming, you know, we, we've already done this this summer in, in this meeting we're about to have in the next few minutes, we're going to be doing this. And then throughout the summer and into the fall, just like constantly putting our email addresses and our phone numbers out there and saying, hey, if you have ideas or you're interested in participating in something or you're interested in getting more involved, 
just just talk to us, right? We we plan to be very accessible to to all of our members in that way. Um, Caitlin, what what would you add to that? Um, I would just basically echo most of what you said. Um, as vice president, my one of my important duties is preparing and presenting the budget. And one thing that we our one goal that we have is to be very transparent and accountable in the budget. Um, so as an average member, you're paying dues to um, NEA, AFT, UFF, FEA, all of these parent unions. And so we're accountable to the members as stewards of that money. And so we're gonna have an increased um, transparency in the budget process um, and what the budget ends up being. And then also how we're gonna look at comparing um, the budget versus the actual spending. Uh, we're gonna have some additional information like bar graphs over time, pie charts, things like that at the Senate um, meeting this September. Yeah, um, a, lot, a lot of visuals for people yeah, who I'm maybe person, aren't into so. the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that would be, as vice president, that would be kind of my main connection to the average member is that I'm spending money that they've contributed, or I'm not personally spending, but I'm overseeing this, the spending of money that they've contributed to our union. And I'd also reiterate what Andrew said, we have our political action, um, just having the president or vice president um, engaged in political activity is not sufficient. The power of a union is the people, the number of people. So, so we're, um, we value incorporating as many people as possible into decision making, but also in political action, speaking at um, the legislature, writing letters, all those kinds of ways that the average member can get involved to build power for our union, because ultimately that's, that's where our power lies is in numbers, not individuals. Well, Caitlin, Caitlin, I'm glad you brought up the legislature because, you yeah. know, the thing I think, especially this year, our members, our chapter members, really noticed UFF because of the lobbying that um, the state body did on our behalf with the legislature. And I think that was maybe the one time where members kind of felt the impact of the, um, of the state body because they made requests upon individual chapters, you know, through me, of course, and then I communicated that to our um, to our members and members got engaged with the legislative session to help you all lobby and I'm not sure if I'd seen that in years past but this was kind of an extraordinary year as far as legislation that impacted the classroom impacted the college and university workspace so um, are are we preparing and when I say we um, all of UFF are we preparing for a similar thing in the spring of 2022 um, absolutely, very much so. Uh, and I want to I want to thank Matthew Lotta in particular, the chair of our government relations committee this past year. Um, it is no accident that we were more active this past year, that we had more people going to Tallahassee, that we had more people showing up at, you know, committee meetings. There's no accident that that happened. So I want to brag on Matthew a little bit. Uh, and Matthew will also be continuing as our government relations chair, assuming you know the Senate continues to appoint him. I don't know why they wouldn't. Uh, and Caitlin and I are already planning to sit down with him here uh, as soon as we take office in July and start talking about initiatives. And we actually plan to get government relations work rolling within the first month of our, of our time in office. So just, just some data points. You know, this past year, out of all the FEA locals, and UFF is considered an FEA local, kind of weirdly, out of all the FEA locals, UFF sent significantly more people to Tallahassee to speak against these bad bills and to speak for the things that we supported than any other local by a significant margin. And that was noticed. And so our goal is to, at minimum, hit that baseline again, and hopefully, grow and become even more active and even more engaged and to find more ways for members who can't necessarily make it to Tallahassee on short notice because Florida is so spread out geographically uh, to find ways for our members to get involved in the political system, to easily write letters to their representatives, to easily call in, to hopefully have 
you know, well in advance, a number of people from each chapter already scheduled to go to Tallahassee at any given time. And if there's a committee meeting there, that's great. They can speak to that. And if there's not, we can put them doing something else, but just really get this structured and have a well-oiled machine so that no matter what comes out of Tallahassee, we can look back on the session and look back on the spring and say, we did our part and we feel good about, you know, the work we put in and the effort we put in. So that is very much at the forefront of our minds. Uh, because Caitlin and I both believe in being proactive, not reactive. So we don't want to sit around and wait for and find out what the issue is and then figure out a way to respond to it. We want to be on top of the game from, be from the beginning so that whatever comes out has to deal with us as opposed to us having to deal with whatever comes out. So, so Caitlin, what's the most effective way a, a member in a chapter like ours can get involved in what's going on with the legislature? Um, well, one thing we're hoping to do is get a head start so rather than starting in the new year when legislature is always starting already starting to meet is providing support for local chapters to meet with their local legislators before session begins that's a goal that we have and that's something that would be certainly much more easily done for people that can't travel to tallahassee you can talk to your representatives and senators while they're in your local area. And we'd like to provide support for the government relations committees at each of the chapters or help get those, uh, get those things rolling. Um, that, that was, what was the rest of the question? I think that was it. Okay. So what, yeah. what you're saying is well, yes. the best thing we can do as an individual chapter member is to know who our representatives are in the, in the Florida Senate and the Florida House and make sure we, have, we know how to contact them and have regular communication with them. Absolutely. These pressing yeah. Issues. yeah. That's Absolutely. And, and it's trying to develop to develop those relationships prior to having an emergency with a bad bill that's coming through. Um, it's a goal of ours to to develop those for each of the chapters that are you know in, want to get involved. Yeah. Right. And and I would add to it as well. You know, one one thing we want to remind people of, and this will come up quite a lot in the next year, is don't assume that just because you live in a friendly district or you have a representative who seems to be friendly to higher education, don't assume that they actually understand or know your issues. It's equally as important to meet with that person who ran on supporting public education and make sure they know why increased funding matters to the university system that you're a part of or why keeping guns off campus is important, not just as a political statement, but as like a, a, a statement of physical safety for students and continued enrollment and all of these kinds of things, because they often don't know those details and they, they are very grateful when you can bring those to them and become a sort of trusted source for information about higher ed uh, questions or issues that come up. So we're going to, yeah, it's, it's not just about meeting with senators who might be unfriendly. It's very important to still meet with the friendly senators too. Don't leave anybody out. Well, great. So the, I'm recording you and you right now are doing a sort of listening tour around the state of various mm -hmm. chapters. And so this podcast will go out and this will be an opportunity for you to appeal to those um, people in our chapter who you might want to hear from. So can you tell um, those of us interested, how do we contact you and, and what do you want to hear from us? Probably maybe the second question first. Um, let's see. Well, the, I don't know if the people viewing will be able to see the chat in the recording. I'm assuming not. No, this will just be audio. So. Okay. So what we'll do maybe is, uh, Rob, we can provide to you our email addresses and our, our phone numbers. And so people could shoot us a text or, or send us an email. That's going to be the easiest way to get in touch with us, um, at least until the spring when we're out of COVID and uh, we're having our next Senate meeting. Then if people want to show up to the Senate meeting and actually talk to us in person, that is also an opportunity. Um, I'm sure I'll be driving around quite a bit in the next six or seven months. And since I'm located in South you know, Florida, I'll be, I can, I'll be up in Orlando a few times. So I might, I might be able to drop by the campus, but that's, that's the easiest way to get in touch with us um, is through email or phone number. And we can provide that to you, Rob or Robert. Uh, the, as far as what we want to know, we don't really have a lot of restrictions. Uh, what we're really just interested in hearing is, you know, what, what do the local chapters think are the most important issues that UFF needs to be thinking about, needs to be facing in the next, next year? Um, what do you want to see UFF become? In general, the way we've been explaining this listening campaign to people is, is this. 
Um, at the February Senate meeting, uh, the president's job description included two items that need to be produced each year by the September Senate meeting and need to be provided to the UFF Senate. One of those is a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the other is uh, just a sort of guiding document, a guiding statement for what UFF should be and what we should be doing for the next year. And while Caitlin and I have lots of ideas about these things ourselves, that's why we ran for these offices, we really believe strongly that the, both of those documents, all the information in there should be gathered from the local chapters because we want to hear what issues the local chapters are facing because we believe that should really be what guides what the state level does, not necessarily what our nationals or parent unions tell us to do, but what the, the issues on the ground that the local chapters are facing or how we need to guide, build those documents and how we need to guide UFF in the future. So pretty much anything you can think of as local members that you're like, hey, when I think of UFF, I wish we did more of X, or I wish I heard more about Y. That's the kind of stuff we want to know. Caitlin, would you add anything to that? I would just say anything you want to tell us. Any concerns you have, questions you have, uh, directions you'd like UFF to take, um, any kind of um, feedback, that you would like to see things done differently. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say anything, anything you wanna tell us. I, I like to listen. I think it's important to hear from people and um, we can have our contact information, our uh, personal emails and our um, FEA emails and our uh, cell phone numbers so that people can reach us. Yeah, and I, I would double down on questions too because we're, we're doing a lot of work on transparency right now. So if there's ever anything that you think about UFF and go, that's never made any sense to me. I don't know what this is, tell us. Because we're, we want to make sure when we go into Senate, we have everything that explains to every average member what UFF is and how it works. All right, great. I want to thank you both for joining me today. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>